Welcome to Quick Geek. This is your tech news, South Africa. As you can see, we're busy testing out the green screen uh, for the first time. Yeah. So uh, we're still busy sorting out the lighting, excuse some speckles. Uh, as you can see, we're on the beautiful beach in Cape Town, um, but we're not really there. Of course not. We, we, we're streaming out from quite humid uh, Centurion. Yep. Cool. Uh, into our first story, um, Alan Knock Craig is in the news, and he's refuting the fact that he's going to Salsi, but you said that there's actually a bit more news to that. Yeah, there's industry speculation that uh, that really the talks between um, Alan Knock Craig and Salsi are serious, but um, one has to understand that, that he's actually still a Vodacom employee uh, until at least the end of April, so he's actually under restraint of trade. He cannot work for anybody else, um, at least in that space, to my understanding, until his contract with Vodacom comes to an end. Should be quite interesting, though, if you replace his loss. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's been it's been a long, wild ride for Celsi. Um, I mean, they they were in everybody's good books when they launched the new network, and, and Lars Reichelt, a very charismatic CEO, came out and and he said everything that everybody wanted to hear, and they seemed ready to deliver. Um, Lars and his team left very suddenly, um, and uh, and I dare say they they've left a bit of a hole. So yeah. it might be good for someone like Not Great to to step in and and uh, and maybe uh, help Celsi out because uh, they're definitely losing favour uh, with yeah, consumers. At the moment. Let's see what happens. Yes. All right. So uh, on from that, Top TV is also a company that's uh, struggling a little bit with with favor, uh, but not from consumers. They're struggling with favor from the government regulator ICASA. So Top TV and ICASA um, went to court. ICASA dragged them to court for an urgent interdict. ICASA won. Top TV is not allowed to launch, drum roll, porn channels. They wanted to launch three porn channels, and, uh, and they've been denied uh, launching those porn channels for, for now, because ICASA wants to have public hearings. Those started on Monday. That's the 16th of January 2012. And, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's well, been look, fairly uh, big In this blow. country, porn is quite controversial. Personally, I hope they get it, because I want some more, them to be more competitive, because I want more competitive competition to DSTV, which will lower prices for everybody. Yeah, and, and I mean, uh, obviously porn is, is, a, is an area that DSTV has not dared wade into, um, and the, the fact that Top TV has just lost or will potentially lose a channel in the coming months, current TV, um, is really uh, not good, no, but not, doesn't not bode well for them. for them. Yeah, so, so this will definitely provide a cash injection um, for them, for the guys who want to watch porn. For those who don't want to watch porn, don't pay the fee. You have to pay 200 Rand a month. Um, that's, that's what they're offering right now. And you have to jump through hoops to get the thing yeah. activated. It's pin codes and it's... Uh, anyway, from that from to something slightly more controversial, uh, not more controversial, also controversial, uh, Google uh, has been caught in Kenya busy basically going through somebody else's uh, company list that was admittedly online and phoning them up and f claiming to be working with this company, which they weren't. Uh, and the company was Mod Modicality. Modicality, yes. Modicality. Yeah. Um, actually, go look up. Uh, it's quite an interesting thing that they ran to do this. It's well worth reading through the uh, transcript of that. Uh, admittedly, Google did immediately come out, head office come out, when they heard about this, apologized profusely, said they'll sort it out, which is the best thing they could have done. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's definitely the best response they could have done to, to you know, for this PR, uh, to uh, prevent a PR storm. I mean, uh, you know, they, they could have, unless there was evidence, you know, to, to be able to deny it, they could have run into like huge, huge problems. Um, people are still not very happy with them at the moment, but I think they're a lot less unhappy if you excuse yeah. the double negative. True. Um, and also, they are, I think they're going through a lot of teething problem now. They've grown quite quickly, and I think there's a lot of this. Talking about this, you want to bring in the next bit that Google's been up to? Yeah, so another controversial thing that Google's been up to is they've introduced social, social search right into their search engine. So in other words, when you're searching for something, for example, Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, whatever, they favor their own well, that's new my, social network. It's not really social search, it's Google Plus search. Yes, exactly. 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 So it's Google Plus, and they call it, they call it um, uh, Google Plus U or, or something like that. So um, except you is just Google Plus. So you don't get results from Facebook, you don't get results from Twitter, and, uh, and it's unfortunate because, I mean, what made Google as a search engine so popular is that it gave you the search results that you wanted, and that's been the criticism that it's, that it's attracted, is that, you know, uh, it, you know, Google, when I'm searching you, you need to give me the stuff that I want. If I'm on Facebook, if I'm on Twitter, if I'm on LinkedIn, you should give me those results. You shouldn't or, just favor your own social network. more importantly, let's say you're talking up Lady Gaga. Yes. And the most uh, likely place to find relevant information is either a website or on Twitter. Mm. Or even on YouTube. 
but it's very unlikely to be Google Plus. Yes. Which is actually the one that comes up. Yes. So basically, they're going to force artists and everybody to become on Google Plus. Otherwise, you're going to disappear in the search. Yes. And and they've actually even linked this back to, to content creators. So for example, there, there's a trick in your website design so that you can link your authors back to a Google Plus profile. And uh, right now, that's really just cosmetic. But one can see in the future how that could be used as leverage. And uh, you know, Google is really setting themselves up for a massive antitrust thing here. Yeah. Well, let's see what they do. Hopefully, they back off a bit or sort some things out. Talking about uh, things and, and new sites and linking back, do you want to tell us about what's happening? Yeah. There? So, at My Broadband, we've launched a brand spanking new site. We call it Business Tech. It's focused completely on, on obviously, business-related technology news in South Africa. And, uh, and yeah, so it, it should be noted that this is a completely separate site. It's not just a section in My Broadband. We hired a new journalist, Gareth Forster, to, to help generate content for the site. Um, and, uh, and also, just to assuage any fears out there, this does not mean that business news will vanish from my broadband. Um, this just means, uh, you know, yep. that that there can there be more business content, and there will be content shared between the sites still. Cool, very cool. Hope it goes well. Thank you very much. I'm um, talking about uh, CEOs, and another CEO that's been in the news recently is uh, Rudy Janssen. Uh, and unfortunately, we heard that he's leaving my broadband. My MWeb. Ah, uh, MWeb, sorry. Yes, it would be great to have him working for my broadband, though Rudolph might have one thing to say about <laughs> him taking over the CEO role. Uh, but in uh, leaving MWeb, um, he's done a lot of great things. And, and MWeb, while under his stewardship, has done some great things. So it's all the uncapped internet, ADSL, uncapped servers, which we're using. Um, so we quite certainly, and hopefully he goes into something great. Yeah, yeah, and, and it is sad to see. I mean, he's actually pretty much said that he's leaving the ISP space altogether. Um, so it's sad to see him go, but we wish him the best of luck with whatever he chooses to, to pack on. And we hope he tells us what he's doing so we can keep track of him. Yes, well, I would imagine from your guys that you definitely <laughs> want to know. Yeah. Um, all right, so are we going to talk about the Galaxy Nexus? Yeah. So um, we've got two smartphones coming to South Africa, the Galaxy Nexus. That's Google's latest Android smartphone. That's built by Samsung. And we've got the Nokia Windows Phone 7 device finally coming to South Africa called the Lumia. The first one's the Lumia 800, and that'll be shortly followed by the Lumia 710. So the Nexus, they say, is going to be here in the first quarter, hopefully as early as February, Vodacom told us previously. I hope so. I'm I'm also champing at the bit for that device. And uh, the Nokia um, Lumia 800, Nokia has just very recently confirmed it's definitely coming to South Africa. They're looking for early Q1 uh, launch date, and it will be shortly followed by the, uh, the Lumia 710, a slightly cheaper um, smartphone, and, uh, and that's going to come out in Q2. So um, here's hoping Nokia can bring the magic back. Well, let's hope so, but like I heard somebody else say about the Windows mobile phone, they want to like it. Just can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's slick looking, uh, but yeah, it remains to be seen whether it can make a, a splash. It's free, but there's not enough apps and stuff like that. But they might change, in which case it would look at it as a lot more attractive prospect. Yeah. Anyway, from that into our question time, and the question this week is, you know, what what media servers are you guys using? What do you like? And what do you recommend? Um, I'll start off with. Uh, I must say, the one I use is the Xtreamer, and I must say, I really like it. It's, and the main reason is simple. It just works. Uh, you, plugs into a network, so you can do network shares, network streaming, you can plug a hard drive in, it just plays. It's simple to the point I've even got my parents' one, and they both love it and use it, and my mother, who's not that technologically advanced, can use it. Uh, it does HDMI, 1080p, plays pretty much all the formats out there. Uh, but I know Jan has a different thing that he uses that he recommends. Yeah, I mean, when I'm not watching content off my PC, um, I do you know, prefer hooking up or just using the PlayStation that's already connected to the TV. Um, it handles um, HD content very well. If you've got a Blu-ray disc, uh, if you rent one from the video store, if you do that kind of thing, you can pop that in there and, and watch. It also streams over the network, um, though you need a, a Windows Media Center PC to do that. So um, you can use a normal Windows install to, to run that. You just need media media player installed and, and running. Um, but uh, you can also, if you've got the tech savvy, you, you can actually install a, a similar kind of service on Ubuntu or on Linux, on a Linux distro. So you don't need Windows per se if you've got the tech savvy to, to set it up on, on Linux. Um, so yeah, I, I think the PlayStation, if for something that you've already got in your house, you don't have to run out and oh, buy oh, a media oh, stream if you don't want to. i going to say the advantage is you can play games on it. Yep, true. Um, and if you're not going to play games on it, uh, for about 2,000 Rand less at about 1,000 Rand, get the Extrema. And if you want to play games, definitely go for the PS3. Rad. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to, to watch our full show of Let's Talk Geek. And you can get that at ltg.letstalknetwork.tv. Thank you for watching. <laughs>